Hey everyone, so I genuinely don't know how to start this video than the first line, sleeper cells activated across Europe. Again, you know, this is one of those things that is very difficult to talk about because certain keywords get, um, you know, get restricted, they get um, put into an algorithm and, you know, the video gets banned. But I don't think there's any other way to talk about this than sleeper cells have now been activated across Europe. Now, I'm going to share a couple of articles with you guys, you know, so you know I'm going from mainstream media. But if you look back through my videos, I've said so many, so many times the risk of sabotage, the risk of criminal gangs, these, um, you know, these attacks in countries that are, um, you know, that especially in the United Kingdom, but as we see in Europe, I also said that the threat in Europe is a lot higher because of the amount of munitions that are in Ukraine that could possibly have been smuggled back. So let me just quickly share this, guys. I do apologize for the lighting and the what we're, we're building this studio and it's becoming um, just messing about with the light. It's really, um, really difficult. So I want to share this article with you here. So this is an article from GB News, and this is the key part here. Iran has been at war with us for decades. They have militant sleeper cells in Britain ready. And you can obviously, you know, that's synonymous with Europe. If there are sleeper cells in Britain, you can pretty much guarantee that there'll be sleeper cells in Europe, as we may have potentially just seen. Uh, sleeper cells ready to rise up and attack us. And the taxpayer, us, have been funding them. That's the allegation. Uh, that's the allegation. This is the very de definition of a Trojan horse. So that's what was said like a couple of days ago. I'll put the article in the description. And that was on GB News. And that is absolutely in line with what we've been saying for the, such a longest time. And I gave the analogy like... On our live stream earlier on today, I said, wouldn't it be great if the United States, for example, before the invasion of Iraq, wouldn't it be fantastic if the United States could somehow move all their soldiers into Iraq without anybody knowing? I don't know, maybe trickle feed them like 50, 60, like 100, you know, you know, trickle feed them into that country. And wouldn't it be a fantastic tactical achievement to get the Iraqi government to pay for their hotels, pay for their food, pay for their medical care, pay for their dental care, pay for their life support? Wouldn't that be a fantastic achievement for the United States military if they could manage to do that with their army? Now, I'm not saying this has happened anywhere else in the world because, you know, that would be speculation and it would be wild. But wouldn't it be a fantastic, you know, opportunity would it be a fantastic achievement if that could happen so let's go on to what's happened in uh so two explosions rock the immediate vicinity of the israeli embassy in denmark now i've done some work in denmark um you know and in copenhagen and there's always a big police, well, from what I've seen, and I don't know whether I was there in a particular time where they had to have a large police presence, but there was a huge police presence, and it looks like they were regular, um, a police presence by the by Jewish schools, by Jewish locations, because of, I don't know, you guys tell me. But what you can see now is that there have been explosions rocked in and around the location of the Israeli embassy in Denmark. It's come out recently that this was uh, these were hand grenade explosions. That's all we know at this point. And guys, remember all these videos are my speculation, my analysis, and a lot of my opinions. Where I've got where I'm going from articles direct from the news. I will obviously share these articles with you. So I will put these articles in the links. Uh, I will share these links in the description. But what we've got now is yesterday. GB News saying that there are potential sleeper cells operating in Britain. Obviously, if they're operating in Britain, they'll be operating in Europe, you know, as a wider spectrum. Now, today, we've seen explosions in and around the embassy in Denmark. And we've also seen, hang on, Swedish police probe report of a shooting outside the Israeli embassy in Stockholm. So now, you know, I don't know any other way you can put this. I really don't know any other way we can describe this other than sleeper cells activated. Now, as things progress, 
I can't see these things going backwards. I can't see these things uh, regressing. All I can see is these attacks, they would become more frequent as people get more and more frustrated with how the Israelis are dealing with things in Lebanon, how they're dealing with things in Gaza, how they're dealing with things in a wider region. And what I said in like in so many videos, as soon as the Israelis went into Lebanon, I said, I said, guys, listen, if we start seeing these, and I think they will use those tactics, and I've gone on to this, you know, I've explained why they will use the same tactics, why I feel they'll use the same tactics. If they use the same tactics that they're using in Gaza, but, and I think we, we mentioned it, there's a report on it, it's called um, Operating in... Um, rubbleized terrain or something there's a new area of warfare so basically what the israelis are doing they're moving into a building they're clearing a house and then they're bringing the house down uh they're turning it you know they're building bulldozers in to turn that into rubble they're doing this so the bad guys can't get in behind them because if you get bad guys in behind you you, you risk the uh, you run the risk of having snipers behind you having indirect fire behind you people putting booby it, it, it's just absolute chaos if you get bad guys behind you so that's why they're doing it if we start to see, which I think we will, footage of this these sort of tactics coming from Lebanon, and again, you know, I'm not saying this in response to what's happened recently. I'm saying this because it's what I said very early on. If we see that, we're going to see, you know, an outcry from the Arab-speaking world, the Muslim world, the, um, you know, Islam, the uh, whatever, whatever, whatever bracket you want to put that those people in. And I'm not saying, you know, guys... This is just, I'm, things are happening now that we have no control over. We're moving through a time in our in our human evolution where these things are just happening. And, you know, they're happening more and more frequently. They're happening with more and more intensity, more and more ferocity. Even I, with my, you know, I give really aggressive timelines for things. I see things happen and I lay out in front of me and I say, right, this, this, and this is going to happen. It may take three, six months for that to happen. But what I what I looked at with this with this conflict in um, in Lebanon at the moment, this is happening a lot faster than I, I even thought it would happen. I didn't think the Iranians would be able to mount an attack so quickly i didn't think the iranians would mount an attack so quickly and then you've got now the israelis saying they're gonna take a couple of days to plan the next move to strike the iranians you know it's absolute chaos at the moment and now you're seeing i, I really don't know any other way to put it sleeper cells activated across europe if they're activated across Europe, are they activated in the United Kingdom? Is there right now somewhere in the United Kingdom, potentially people sat there, you know, thinking, right, you know, maybe we're going to go and destroy a water pipe or something worse. We're relatively lucky in the United Kingdom in the context that we don't have a land border with Europe. So any munitions trying to be smuggled over here, it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult to get munitions into the United Kingdom. What I will say, and I've said this so many times, these rubber dinghies that are coming, like literally multiple, multiple dinghies arrive in the UK every day. Would it be possible? And I'm not saying it is. I'm asking you guys the question. Do we think it would be possible to fill a waterproof bag with contraband and have that contraband floating at all? under the water behind one of these rubber dinghies. And then when the rubber dinghies are intercepted by the RNLI, they just cut that free and they just let it go under the water and it sinks. Do we think that's possible? Equally, do we think, and again, I'm not speculating anything, I'm asking a question. Do we think that these criminal gangs, these smuggling gangs know the best times to make a channel run? Do we think they know the best times to make a run over the channel and the best places to go where the RNLI have limited um interception capacity i don't know i'd say as a smuggling gang if it's your bread and butter and you're earning money you kind of would know those routes but who knows so that's the situation as we are now i feel there's been sleeper cells activated across europe i don't see any way that this can de-escalate at the moment especially now how the israelis are gonna you know they're gonna strike back at the iranians which is going to be catastrophic because the Israelis have a lot better equipment. They have a lot more sophisticated strike capacity. 
So when the Israelis strike back at the Iranians, you know, it's going to be a potent strike. They're going to take out a, you know, they're talking about, and again, it's absolutely wild, but they're talking about taking out the, um, you know, the Israel, sorry, the, the Iranian nuclear facilities there. And what you've got at the moment in Israel, you've got both sides of the political spectrum. So in the United Kingdom, you would have Labour and Conservatives, United States, you would have Republicans and Democrats. They're both calling for the same thing. So there's no opposition now in Israel. So it's looking like Israel is going to strike back at Iran. Some of the targets that they're talking about publicly anyway are the nuclear facilities. Now, it's going to take them a couple of days to identify what targets to attack. And this is going to be because there's a host, going to be a host of reasons. First of all, they're going to have to look at how the assault on Lebanon is going, how the assault in Gaza is going. What are the likely options? What are the likely further options? And then they're going to have to look at that holistically and think, right, what are the best targets to take out? For example, and I'm just making this up, you know, if they, I don't know if any of this, I'm just making this up, guys. For example, if the Iranians have a mobile missile launcher or something, a Mossad or whoever have managed to intercept communications to know where those things are, if the, if the Israelis strike those things and take them out, then, you know, the Iranians will know there's a chink in that armor, they'll know there's a chink in that intelligence, and they'll close that down, so it'll be harder for those guys to, you know, the whoever, to look in, to listen into whatever phone calls or satellite communications, whatever it is. So they need to understand what to strike to have the best the best capacity for moving forwards and i don't know what that's going to be only the guys in the in the office at mossad they'll they'll be the ones who know this so that's what we're looking at at the moment i you know i'm i am sorry for the uh, thumbnail on this video but i really don't know what else to say apart from sleeper cells have been activated across europe are they coming to the united kingdom are they coming to elsewhere Time will tell, but I don't see I don't see any de-escalation on the cards. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna mag to grid and I will get you guys another video later. Thank you.